Hey everybody, welcome into this week's episode of the Take 3 Wrestling Podcast. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, you can obviously see the graphic. A little, uh, little subdued more than normal as we go live. Uh, we're recording this on Thursday night, January 19th, 2023. Um, obviously not a fun one. Obviously not a way we want to start this thing. Um, Tuesday... About 5 o'clock p.m., um, Jay Briscoe was in a horrific car accident uh, that claimed his life as well as the driver of the other vehicle um, and has caused direct impact um, to the entire Briscoe family as his daughters were in the vehicle with him. Um, I mean, I don't know. We're going to talk about it a little bit more when Joe gets here because uh, obviously – me and Joe watched a ton of Ring of Honor together, um, so I don't want to go too far down this slope um, just yet, but uh, it sucks. Uh, it's not a fun way to start this thing, because we normally like to do this as an escape, um, but unfortunately, I don't think there is escaping this. I think this is a pretty harsh dose of reality and um, something that we're all going to have to live with for a while. Um Joined again, like always, Big Jim, Ernest are here. Joe will be here in a little bit, guys. Uh, I don't want to make this the me show, so somebody feel free to jump in. Yeah, I, you know it's 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 been such a um, such an emotional week for for wrestling fans, everybody in the wrestling community. Um, you know, we we did a, a long form uh, tribute to, to Open Three CT uh, live tonight. Um, yeah, it's it, it, it. You know, I was getting ready to do huddle up um, on Tuesday when when the this is the news started breaking, and uh, you know, I was texting you guys, and I was texting with the three CT guys, and um, you know, it was one of those things where you you hear reports, and um, it's like, don't be true, don't be true, don't be true. Like you're just hoping it's not. Um, unfortunately, it, it, it turned out to be, um, but. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll certainly touch on it in long form. Uh, not not the way we want to start a show, um, but but you know I'll say this: it, it's it's been um, seeing a lot of the reaction from from people within the the wrestling community this week, uh, giving their memories of of him, not just the wrestler, but the person, the dad, the husband, um, the friend, the brother uh, is. Um, has been uh you know refreshing to see um in a in a twitter sphere wrestling community that can sometimes be on the more toxic side um so uh to 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 see something like this and and uh it's it's a reminder of the fragility of life um but uh yeah certainly thinking about um his uh his his wife and kids and brother and parents and family um, as, as well as the, the, the countless number of people who uh, shared locker rooms uh, around the world with him. No, absolutely. I was uh, I was actually out driving, and I just picked Joe up um, right before Huddle Up went live. Um, I was driving for DoorDash. Um, and you were actually the first one that I had seen anything from because, you know, obviously doing all the driving there, I wasn't really mindful of the Twitter sphere. Um, you know, and you told us, oh, you know, Ryan just heard this from a couple of, uh, you know, indie groups and, you know, and me and Joe are both like, wow. So I pulled over at a stop to drop off food and I got back in the car before I took the next thing. I opened up my Twitter and nothing was popping up. Nothing was popping up. And I was like, oh, whew. one of those, you know, you know, one person heard the story and it was telephone, tell a friend, tell a wrestler. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know five ten minutes later you know it was uh the tony khan tweet and that's when reality set in that this wasn't telephone tell a friend tell a wrestler this was a lot of people's lives um just got greatly destroyed um again I, I, we'll, we'll obviously go into more um detail uh, on jay and remembering jay um later on in the show so i don't want to get too far along on that um Earlier tonight, Thursday night, there was an update. Um, I'll read that off uh, when we talk about Jay a little bit more so we can, you know, potentially discuss what's next um, 
for, for that family because uh, they're going to need us for a while. Um, his wife, his kids, his brother Mark, you know, that entire family is going to need the wrestling community support for a long time. Um, I saw something on the internet and, and this is where uh, we can move on from this. And, and maybe this is something that I, in my heart, would hope that would happen. But I saw somebody put on the internet that this would be a time where basically before Vince came back, that this would have been a great, God damn it, Joe. Um, this would have been a time for uh, like a, almost like a Brian Pillman Memorial esque show. Yeah. Um, and I felt like that would have been something super, super cool, um, to see WWE send some guys, you know, maybe Steen and Steen and Zane, you know, maybe send a, the Usos or something and, you know, have, ha- have a nice remembrance that way. Not that I know that Tony or Vince would be able to coincide for, for something along those lines, but, um, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where. It's, you know, and and as a father of three, you know, I can only imagine, you know, she lost her husband. One of her daughters has no feeling basically below the thigh. And her other child is basically has a leg brace on because she had an external fracture of her tibia and her fibia. So it, it's when when we talk about this family's going to need us being the wrestling fans. It's it's like I said, it's not they need us today. They need us tomorrow. They're going to need us in January and February and March, you know, and this is something where, again, being a father of three, I, I don't know how I would be able to sit here mentally and not drive myself nuts knowing that my world just crumbled around me. Right. Dude, I, I don't I don't I don't have kids. Um and if and if this happened to my wife, like I don't I don't know um like I don't I don't know how uh how I could uh move forward. Much less uh to lose your partner and then to have to um still be a parent. And to have to have two kids in a hospital, um, you know, with with all of the injuries that uh, the, the the daughters uh, incurred, um, yeah, I, I I have no clue. I mean, it's it's um, you know, and I have a I have a brother. Uh, I couldn't imagine getting that call and losing my brother. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's so many, there's so many layers and for so many people in the wrestling business, uh, Jay was a, a friend, a close friend, a best friend. Um, you know, we, we all have friends. We all have people in our lives that are close, like family. And, and yeah, there's, there's tons of people, uh, this week who lost, lost those, uh, lost that person. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's tough. Yeah. Well, certainly, um, touch more on it later but uh when 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 joe gets here but yeah um i will say that the the positive though is the community like we talk about (laughs) the community being very toxic at times and certainly that it has its elements but you know we've seen through the years when you have tragedy whether it's someone in wwe or someone in AEW, like you know with Brody lee and whatnot and an independent scene you know here um it's good to see the, the good still stand out you know, and you see a lot, of, a lot of unity again. You know, obviously, want to continue to be that way going forward. But at least in these moments, we people come together, and you see a lot of the the, the good. And I, it it makes me feel like there's still hope in this world, in this in this dirty world, in this disgusting world that we live in, and maybe trust and all that, a lack of trust rather. You know, we you know, good to see there's still good could come out of this sometimes, and people you know not united and trying to uplift his family which we i'm sure they definitely need at this point for sure no, no. so and, and and again too like i'm as someone who's not who's only now gotten to independent wrestling in the last couple of years since being back in wrestling in general um the briscoes were a group that always stood out when i try to research names that wrestlers look at and 
the last 10, 15 years, and the Briscoes were one of those names that always stood out. So you, you, you hear when you heard that this happened on Tuesday, it was like, ooh, wow. It, it hit me right away because, like, I knew that name immediately, and it resonated. So you see right there to search the impact of, 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 the, of the Briscoe brothers. So rest in peace to, to Jay. Yeah, uh, again, I just uh, I'll say more, you know, obviously when we talk about them at the end of the show, when Joe gets here, um, this is just one of those. Uh, one of those moments where I, I look back at my my fandom, um, I'll, I, I told the story in the chat on 3CT earlier tonight. Um, I've had a few interactions with Jay, including uh, my first ever uh, Ring of Honor show in, you know, beautiful Manass Ass, Virginia. Um, you know, they were wrestling Man-ass a tag ass. match. Um, the next night they had the American Wolves uh, for the Ring of Honor tag titles. And I was wearing an American Wolves t-shirt. Um, and I shit you not, Jay just kind of stops me. He's like, hey, boy. We should wear the wrong shirt around this parts. And I just, I literally <laughs> had almost shit myself. Um, and then he just kind of gave that Jay Briscoe smile and chuckled, you know, and he shook my hand. He told me, thanks for coming out. And it's those moments, you know, that you don't get to have at, at big shows like WWE and ring of honor, or should be an AEW. Um, and now ring of honor, obviously, because of being Tony Khan presents wrestling. Um, so if you're in a in a part of town where you can get to a local indie show, um, you know every person in that in that locker room from the guy who helped build the ring to the guy who's going to close out the show and potentially walk out with the title belt, uh, every one of those people is going to you know if they see you or you come up and talk to them, they're going to thank you for coming out. Um, you know and that's something that that I never took for granted. Um, no matter how big Ring of Honor got, no matter how quickly it, it became this alternative and basically third biggest promotion in, in North America. Uh, you know, it could have even have been second at times against impact based off of just what ring of honor was doing. Um, to know that a company like that, that's putting on shows the way that they were, that every person in that locker room was going to come out and say, thank you in some way, shape or form. Um, that that's the stuff that, builds this community um i've seen jay quite a few times um we we had actually me and joe had talked late last week about going to supercard of honor for the first time in probably four years um and I would be lying to all of you if I didn't tell you that a Briscoe match was probably going to be one of my favorite ones on the show. Um, and now that's not going to happen. So. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Same, same thing as we did uh on on 3ct tonight um you know we uh we we press on we we try and do things as normal as possible um to try and be as much of an escape as uh as we can be and as we can give ourselves um so for a little bit uh, until joe gets here and we, we we talk more about uh, the life and career of Jay Briscoe. Um, we, um, that's what we're going to do. So, uh, EJ, I think you got your, uh, the first topic. Um, yeah. Rumble season. Well, this was asking me my topic last week. And then I re- realized that last week was actually the, literally the week of the first episode of raw. So I did a little pivot here and I'm going to push it this week. So kind of, yeah, pivot. <laughs> kind of the, the same thing like last week, but we're rumble, uh, style. Um, as you know, we're on now Rumble season. Um, Rumble is actually next Saturday. Wow, this shit's going fast, isn't it? Um, but uh, Who are you telling? It's, it's crazy. And obviously, to me, it's like my personal favorite time of year is you know going to Rumble into the Mania season. Um, and I just want to you know like, like last week, personalize it again. You know, give your top three favorite moments, matches, whatever it may be of uh, World Rumble history. I mean, this is a event that started in 1988. 
um, on USA was not a pay per view until 1989, and has, since then has been people label this as probably their second best, second favorite uh, pay per view slash premium live event the WWE gives every year. Certainly, certainly it's, probably, it's probably my favorite. Um, so I, I guess get, you know if you want to go, we go, we can go round robin around this kind of uh, give an event or moment or match or just whatever of normal history. Top three, if you want to. Uh, I guess I'll come firing out the gate. Um, since I'm an emotional mess over here, uh, yeah. give me uh, give me Cactus Jack versus Triple H from uh, Royal Rumble uh, 2000. Uh, that match was mm-hmm. brutal, and seeing Triple H's arm basically becoming a gusher, or was it a side? I can't remember if it was arm or his side, but literally he was just like bleeding all over the fucking place. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was the that was an MSG Rumble, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, I've been watching back through. I don't. Uh, you don't think it? No, I guess I would have passed that one already. Yeah, because you got to Al. You got to Al Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was definitely past. You definitely that one. got past that one. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I've been. I've in my office. I have a TV, and I've just had them running on on Peacock all day, uh, every day for the last uh, last week or so. And um, yeah, definitely a uh, a classic there. Um, I will give my first one. Um, it comes from the Royal Rumble 1994. Uh, it is after the casket match, uh, where uh, everybody and their mother uh, had to uh, had to come to uh, Yakazuma's aid <laughs> to. Uh, to defeat the undertaker in the casket match they had to open the urn um and and the smoke had to pour out of the urn uh to defeat the undertaker and as they're uh there's as they're wheeling him towards the back smoke starts pouring out of the bottom of this thing um (laughs) the lights go dark you see the undertaker from the inside of the casket up on the screen and he has that uh you know yeah i will not rest in peace and then the, the 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 lightning strike hits it and he comes out of the top of the screen and goes up to the fucking roof. I'm sitting there at uh, this is uh, this is the first rumble I watched live. I'm sitting really? here at yeah. uh, eight years. I would have been still eight at this point because I would have turned nine in the summer of '94. And I'm sitting there going, "What? Like what? The fuck are you? <laughs> I didn't say fuck. But what the fuck am I seeing right now? This motherfucker going to the roof? Like He's it levitating? Was, right? It's just insane." Um, so, you know, like that kind of like, you know, that level of production and stuff that you see now, you go back and watch that and it's like, this is fucking lame. In 94, <laughs> man, that was, that was fucking <laughs> yep. wild. So, um, so, so is, can we name that the Alliance to end the Undertaker? Like we had the Alliance to end Hulkamania and WCW. Yeah, I mean, was, really, you could. It was literally <laughs> the entire heel locker room. I mean, it took, yeah, it took everybody. I want to see if they have an actual list of the number of uh there was like there was there was at least 12 of them yeah plus yeah. plus yakazuma uh while you're searching for that one uh mine one of my nasties is uh the uh i call it the stone cold shenanigans of the 97 rumble this is what this stone cold in general you know winning the rumble but also but even that's win the rumble but also just like the shenanigans you know like you know you know not you know getting knocked out of the ring the reference it comes back in doing the whole uh he knocks takes one out of the ring, eliminates him. Just look, checking his uh fake watch, and then when Bret Hart comes out, you know all that. To me, that that was yeah. We know this is obviously the build to Austin being the guy a year later, but I love this slow build of him developing that character. And to 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 be honest with you, you can argue that Rumble ninety of oh, ninety seven was actually the star making moment that really like okay yeah, not, maybe not now. But probably the next year or two, this is going to be the guy. Well, I, th- there was a lot of times, uh, especially back in those like '90s rumbles, where mm-hmm. um, where the WWE would use the Royal Rumble as kind of like a a uh, not not necessarily they were tipping their hand, but they would use it as an opportunity to present somebody as a potential next big thing. I mean, '94, you saw Diesel eliminate. Was it nine people or something like that? It was a record that stood for a number of years. Uh, we had seen it with Kane. We had, se- you know, we've seen it over the years where where they gauge the crowd's reaction to somebody cleaning house in the in the Rumble. 
Um, so yeah, the, the Austin one there, he was kind of already on a little bit of a rise, but then, yeah, that, that definitely, um, was such a huge moment. So I found, but, but yeah, it definitely, uh, was one of the launching points, um, for the, the long and storied career of Stone Cold Steve Austin, but here I found it. Um, so in that match, of course you had Yokozuna universe, the undertaker, uh, Mr. Fuji got involved. Um, but you had crush the great Kabuki, uh, Tenru, bam, bam, Bigelow, um, Adam Bomb, Jeff Jarrett, the Head Shrinkers, and Diesel. So you had uh, one, two, nine three, wrestlers, four, and five, Fuji. six, seven, eight, nine, plus Yakazuma and Mr. Fuji. Who's who? Uh, and, I, and I think Cornette, if memory serves, was also in the corner of Yokozuna at this time. He may have been. So he was still champion. Yeah, Jim Cornette. So yeah, it was like it was like twelve guys versus the Undertaker and Paul Bear. It was insane. Oh, so it was really yes. versus the Undertaker because Paul Bear was yeah. about as useful as uh, the, dude, the promos leading up to that one was the double wide. Yes. Double oh, yes. oh my god, it's so corny and dumb, but it was just it was the it's best. It's 1994, Jim. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, okay, give me another one, uh, fellas. Uh, Mike, uh, my second up, um, and it's funny because I'm actually gonna have to watch this show. Um, in the next couple days, because I'm doing a re rewatch of 2018, um, oh, and okay. I have reached Royal Rumble 2018. Okay, uh, give me Oscar winning the first ever women's Royal Rumble match. I like it. Um, yeah, I actually just wrapped up the Go Home SmackDown about four o'clock today, right before I went to dinner for my dad's birthday. Um, it was uh the yep movement for uh kevin owens and Sami Zayn. yep mm. yep uh our good friend uh the uh the eight hundred thousand heir for his appearance in the royal rumble mr mcmahon not not vince but the other one i'm not gonna say his name um you know trying to keep down kevin owens and Sami Zayn. <laughs> and brian is the commissioner or whatever so yeah um this whole fucking thing is hilarious um but yeah i'm at the rumble so We'll be watching that one over the next couple of days, probably. Uh, so, um, and this is one of those where this was really the first like real chance that they had to have a women's Royal Rumble because they had women's wrestlers before this, but they didn't have enough yeah women's wrestlers to really do a Rumble. And and here's the thing: oh, do a twenty woman. The Royal Rumble is a thirty person over the top battle royal. Yeah. It's not a Except for that one year that Alberto Del Rio won a forty-person battle royal. Yeah, say they did the forty-one reason. one time, but yeah, um, you can't do less. No, you can only do more. Uh, um, so yeah, literally, um, I just felt like they couldn't uh, really have had. Unless we forget the fifty-man greatest Royal Rumble. That was that was not a Royal Rumble. That was, was a Sands of Time. It was the greatest Royal Rumble, but it wasn't a Royal Rumble. It had a name before it. Fucking Saudi Arabians, <laughs> Prince Ali Jeez. Ali Akbar. Oh boy! It, it had royal in the name. He thought it was for him. You know, he just decided to fancy it up. All right. Uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> can't censor that one. Yeah, right. Um, no, but this was the first time that I really felt that there was balance in their women's division to do this. Um, they had enough bodies. They had enough people that made sense because a lot of the time leading up to this, there wasn't a lot of people that would have made sense to win a women's Royal rumble. Like I really felt like it would have been a cakewalk for somebody like Charlotte or, you know, so I, I felt like this was the first time that we actually had like, Oh, we have multiple people in in this match that, you know, could find a way to win this match. So right. just my, just my personal, uh, I, I, love I, to the women's Royal rumble. Yeah. I watched that with my, my nine year old for the first time. I think about within the last year, um, it was really good. Yeah, that's one. Um, I mean, it was in Philly, and I think we had a we had like a snowstorm or something that that weekend. So like, I just i I had a chance at the last minute. I could have uh, I could have called in a few favors and uh, gotten to that one, but I was like, ah, I should probably play on the side of caution and 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 not go uh, travel a couple hours in a snowstorm. But uh, yeah, definitely a uh, definitely a, a, a historic one, no less. Um. My second uh, Rumble moment uh, takes us to um, 
the the 2005 uh, Royal Rumble match when uh, there was uh, some question about um, was was it Batista was it John Cena and um, the, uh, the 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 boss man makes his way out to the ring to uh, to to call the shots and tell everybody in the ring how this is going to go down. And he marches, uh, marches his ass out to the ring, and he goes to slide in the ring. And <laughs> unknown to him and everybody in the building, he blew out both of his quads when he sl- slid into his uh, into the ring. And he went to stand up, and his legs folded like a cheap piece of paper. <laughs> and you, know, he, you don't need these quads, right? You don't need these quads. No. Um, <laughs> and he uh, sits his ass on the on the ground and props himself up against the ropes. And he uh, starts barking commands, sitting on his ass in the ring. Um, everybody in the ring, confused as all hell, trying to figure out why the hell is the boss? Why is he not standing up? Why is he, he can't not standing out? up? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so Vince McMahon uh, going uh, double quad smash at, at a Royal Rumble uh, 2005 it, because it is just like for everybody that's that's a wrestling fan and, and is watching um you know we all we all know the, what the the, the the scenario but like could you imagine like somebody who's like new to wrestling and you just show him that clip like right now like what like why is this man in a suit sitting on his ass in the ring barking out commands like it is just it's one of the silliest looking things i've ever seen in wrestling uh and and to that it's a it's an all-time rumble moment what did what did tim call him earlier bedpan oh. mick oh it was because we were talking our top raw moments we, yes. we that was our question of the week this week and it was the one of tim's was bedpan mcmahon um oh wow from, from when uh you know um you had you had mr Sacco and yeah and you had you had you had uh dr austin uh yeah you're you're full of the clown man in the head with a bedpan mm-hmm. <laughs> i shit you not i'm listening to that I have it on my phone as I'm driving to Target to pick up a new uh, uh, converter because the new MacBook um, doesn't come with a USB spot. So I had to get one because my son stole my other one for my microphone. Um, So literally, I'm listening to it as I'm turning the corner. He hits the fucking bedpan McMahon fucking line. And I'm fucking laughing so hard I can't see because I'm crying because I wasn't ready for that at all. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> bedpan mcmahon that's Fucking awesome love it. Um, damian lillard sucks by the way just so you guys know Fuck ooh, you. ooh. definitely took the over he has four points he's shooting one of ten from the field <laughs> third quarter oh here it comes oh, there it is there it is and that's oh five right you said that was oh five yeah that one, that one was fucking brutal uh, oh, my dude, second, my second you imagine, one. like i can't even just uh yeah, I can't. I can't imagine like blowing out one quad, <laughs> let alone. <laughs> you know, dude, I almost want to like. I, I want to try and, and see if I can put my old editing skills together and and just the clip of Vince going like this and turn him into a fucking wacky, wavy, and flavorful arm. <laughs> yes, he was actually one of Bailey's buddies. Yeah, yeah, he was. We just oh didn't my know God. It. His quad, his quads were actually part of the inflatables. Mm-hmm. That, like it just makes my legs hurt thinking about dude. When out you were like, when you when you made the comment, blowing it out, I was just like, and now my legs increasingly hurt as as we're having this. Every single right movement that your that your leg makes comes from your quads. Like oh yeah, trust me, I'm aware. Tr- <laughs> like getting fuck. in and out, getting in and out of the truck at Amazon. I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. Blown out one of them as I'm like trying to deliver a package. <laughs> Fucking legs wobbly. And then motherfucker had people like he was helped, but he walked to the back because he's oh, Vince yeah. man. Like, it's what his a, pride. He's not what he's an never... egotistical dumb moron. Piece you of can't shit. fix. You can't fix stupid. A horrible human being. <laughs> I think that's right, Jay, what's your next one? Um, mine was actually going back to 1990, uh, the Hogan Warrior standoff. I can't imagine if social media existed back then, how big a deal this would have been. Oh, huge! Because that shit, I remember this. I was nine, turning ten, and that shit was talked about in school for fucking weeks and weeks. 
And this is before they announced the match between Hogan and Warrior at WrestleMania 6. But I remember being in elementary school, and this was a big fucking deal in school. Hogan Warrior met, faced off. Well, we get a match. And they announced the match about well, two weeks later. So, and to me, he's always stood out as one of my uh, better favorite uh, moments in history of the of the company. So, yeah, that that's one. You know, obviously, I wasn't really more than a wee yeah. little one. Yeah, uh, when that actually occurred live. But mm-hmm. as a wrestling fan, going back and watching those shows and seeing those moments, like you could tell in that moment that that was going to be a very big thing for WWE right over over the next six months to a year. So um to see those moments, yeah, those those are definitely ones where even someone as young as I was, you know, going back and watching, you can still feel it knowing mm-hmm. what happens and knowing what the future holds. There's still that right that still has that standalone like power behind it that you know, oh shit, shit's hitting the fan. Even though you know that shit already hit the fan. Yeah. And you can remember so. too also that at that point in real time, Warrior is still ascending. He's still ascending. Like he's literally pretty much an equal Hogan at this point, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of popularity. Hogan is still sustaining; he's still a champion, you know, all that. But Warrior is at this point; he's he's ascending, and you saw the star power there in real time. Like, whoa, okay. And the the, the best part about it too is that it, well, this is an era where there was a heel face, heel face, and these are both baby baby faces to the hilt. And you could not root against you. I mean, who do you? How do you choose sides? Now, for me, it was easy. I was always a Hogan guy. But how do you choose sides? You, you know? are a real American. So, Fight for the rights of every man. Yep. So Hogan Warrior uh, standoff was tremendous. I like it. Uh, all right, my third one, um, and I have a couple here that I've gone back and forth on. Um, actually picking so i'll probably have an honorable mention or two uh at the end um i don't know if i want to pull the trigger on this one or not that's why i'm kind of like hesitating um now i want to know <laughs> as you said that i want to know what it is i won't make this one of my top three moments but i'll mention in the honorable mentions because there's a sound bite that jim can play for, for for that one whenever we talk about it um my third will be the in-ring return of the rated R superstar etch. Yeah. On this day. Um, yeah, when that hit, um I almost fell out of my chair because that was one of those where it's just like you know that there are surprises in every rumble. Mm-hmm. That takes surprise to a little bit of a different level. Oh yeah. Um, that's the you, one where you're just like, we were together watching uh, that one <laughs> at uh, with Tim. Ryan and I were with Tim at, at one of Tim's best friends' house. Um, the and and like Tim, Tim and his friend Marcus started crying. Like they're huge edging Christian guys because they're a little, they're a couple years younger um, than than me, and they're like the the edging Christian thing was like right right in their peak. Mm-hmm. Um, and like they, they were, they were both crying, man. Like they both teared up. Like, cause it was so, like, it wasn't, I mean, it is an all time WWE moment because again, you had somebody who had their, their hall of fame career cut short and, uh, and, I, and, and me and Joe were in Atlanta for what at the time was his last match. Unbeknownst yeah. to us, but just. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Like here's a fucking gut punch. What what made that so cool though, and this is about almost a year into my return to wrestling, watching wrestling, was that in an era where you have all these leaks and all this stuff, and all and all these rumors, there was really no one talking about Edge coming to Royal Rumble. Nothing. No, there was nothing. That's what makes it so special. Like the music came out. Like what the fuck? That's see, because and 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 in that moment, like when you have that moment, like because mm-hmm. like I said. We know that there are going to be surprises. It was like the women's Royal Rumble. Like you kind of knew that Trish and Lita were going to show up mm-hmm. this year. Perfect example. We all knew that Cody Rhodes was going to be in the Royal Rumble match. Right. So WWE put the ball in front of the uh, in front of the court and was just like, "We'll just announce that he's going to be in the match because no one's going to be surprised when he well, wins." Here's the thing: my There has some been something I've picked up about this Cody Rhodes return um, for 
at least the last three three or so weeks and, I, and i've said it multiple times on on social media um if you guys remember triple h's return from the quad injury yep mm-hmm. throughout throughout the time that he blew out his quad you would get these video updates periodically on mm-hmm. raw you know here's how triple h's rehab is going they would have him on satellite or whatever and like this is how it's going you know injury blah 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 so we're getting these things with cody periodically and triple h that like that that all-time return that msg pop um when they aired the the uh youtube beautiful day uh montage video and they said triple h returns next on raw and the all-time pop when triple h returned that was january 7th the rumble was at the end of the month Triple H announced on Raw that night that he was back and he was in the Rumble match. Triple H went on to win the Rumble and win the undisputed title at WrestleMania. Do do you see any complaints in hindsight about them blowing Triple H's return because it was announced that he was going to be in the Rumble match? Like, this this Cody, the buildup to Cody's return is very, very similar to that return of triple H at, at, at the rumble that year. And like, I think it's great. Like it, you know, and it, it's, it's such a fun thing for those that are like really deep enough into wrestling. Cause obviously you remember the first AEW shows, like, you know, Cody's doing the, the, uh, smashing the throne with the sledgehammer stuff and all of that. And I mean, it's to galvanize a fan base. I mean, he's leading the revolution, right? Like it, that is what it is. Um, and now he's, he's back home and you, once the WWE title and, and, you know, now I think it's, it's, uh, it's not lost on me that, that what they're doing with, with the way that the, the return, um, is being handled. And yeah. And I'm like, motherfuckers, he's on the poster. Yeah. Like he's on the Royal Rumble. Like if you really thought that he was going to be a surprise, that's a you problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, but would you, would you prefer the surprise? You know we're a little closer no, to because you know it's not that obvious. Because there's only going to be a handful of actual surprises. Right. Like you tell, like you tell me to my face, like your 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 choice in a surprise is Cody Rhodes or Jay White. I, I'm going to take Jay White because I know Cody's going to be in the match. Yeah. Like I'd rather, I'd much rather you announce Cody to be able to surprise me with Jay White than. Right. Right. I'm not going to announce Cody. We know he's going to be in the match, and then all of a sudden be like, here he is, the guy we knew that was going to be already in the match. If they had not been doing these these updates Training vendetta. from time to time, um, then I probably would have been fine with them doing a surprise Cody return. And, and I- this, this truthfully feels like we are going the way of splitting the titles back up, especially with the Usos only defending the Raw tag team titles on Monday night. Also, the, the surprise could be what we've been predicting for the last year. I think. I mean, I think that's what he's referring to, right? Yeah. So, and I, I saw a report today. It didn't put any names on it, um, but there was a report today that part of the reason there was two reasons WWE um, did not have the surprise. Uh, be Cody Rhodes. I want to pull up the actual tweet here, and I'll give credit to uh, at Wrestle Votes on Twitter. Which, um, in terms of uh, in terms of like spoiler or uh, you know these the, the, the wrestling news sites, uh, r- relatively um, uh, pretty good at times. But uh, uh, the reason behind Cody's return being announced as a, as opposed to a surprise one. Um, Nearly everyone expected it to happen in two sources state uh, that they are, quote, more than pleased with the other surprises that are lined up. So, um, again, no names, no hyperbole or anything in that. But if WWE feels the other surprises are bigger slash better uh, than a uh, anticipated Cody return, then I think they'll be fine. Right. Let's go switchblade Jay White. Did you? Uh, yeah. Did you uh, give your third, uh, Jim? Uh, no, my third. Um, and uh, I, if we're doing this draft style, I'm stealing it from you. 
Me? Um, but it's the uh, it's the Brock Lesnar show. Ah, as you stole from me, damn it! <laughs> it's the Brock Lesnar show, twenty twenty. Man, cross like, it off. In 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 terms, yeah, there's a couple other ones that we can kind of touch on a couple of the uh, honorable mentions. But like, in terms of fun, like, because when they announced that that Brock was going to do the uh, like I'm oh. entering the Rumble so nobody can face me thing. Like so many people crapped on it, and to me, that is like one of the that is one of the most fun Royal Rumble matches since I came back to wrestling um, before WrestleMania 26, so like 12 years ago. Um, it, it is it is an absolute freaking party. Um, Brock's just out there having a blast, dancing around in the ring, like Cowboy B. Brock. Like, well, this is this was before that. Yeah, like this was still clean. Well, that, is, that was that was before. Farmer yeah, this was Brock. still this was still like heel Paul Heyman, yeah. you know, advocate all of that, and he's out there like this is the first shades we got of Money in the Bank, uh, Bank Brock, and Cowboy B Brock, and all of that. Like this, is him out here dancing, having fun, barely breaking a sweat, um, and then of course, you know, uh, Drew gets the elimination. Um, and it is the the, the culmination of the, kicking the balls and then yeah. yeah like it was man it He's was still uh, a dick yeah it was a fucking <laughs> ball I just ass. I just thought because that was my third one also too but you know since you know you mentioned you sold for me because you did we no, know it was but, your third one you've watched yeah. the twenty twenty fucking <laughs> no thing. but the way they booked that that the mixture of wrestlers they they put in that thirteen you know from Elias to Robert Rude to then you know two part uh, two to thirds of the new day and then all the way up to Drew it, it, it was perfect. The best part Sheldon, of that Sheldon Benjamin also the best part of that entire Rumble is whenever Keith Lee came out and he just kind of was like yes damn yeah that's a big boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Sheldon, Sheldon Richardson um, also uh, fucking um, Minnesota boys you know I, I there was there was enough. So nobody that he eliminated was someone that we legitimately thought was gonna that had a shot of winning the rumble. Yeah, I mean like, people hoped, in, in that people hoped Kofi. No. But that was two months like, after the whole thing with the, yeah, him well, losing that's the title. Why. People people were hopeful. They're like, he's no. gonna get his revenge. I'm like, no. you motherfuckers dumb if you think I was like, but, but there was nobody that, that they were like, you know, oh Brock eliminated Drew or Brock eliminated Braun Strowman or or whomever. Who like like a big name that you thought could have won the rumble that year. Um, so the use of the, of the in-between guys, the Robert Roods, the new day, you know, guys like that, like, I feel like that was incredibly well done because it made all of them look more impressive than Mm -hmm. a four minute part of the rumble that they get eliminated by Chad Gable or something like, yeah. yeah, So, so Lesnar had, uh, 13 eliminations in that rumble. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, he eliminated Elias, Eric Rowan, Robert Roode, John Morrison, Kofi Kingston, Rey Mysterio, Big E, Cesaro, mm-hmm. Shelton Benjamin, Nakamura, yeah. MVP, Keith Lee, and Braun Strowman. Okay, so Strowman and Big E are probably the two. Right, and Big E yeah. was still before that build at that point. Correct, but E E was probably more on the way up than Kofi was. Oh, Derek, absolutely, no question. Agreed. So, so the the. But you don't think that him and him or and or Braun Strowman are the favorites to win the Rumble that year? Like you, you just it's not like it wasn't like he went out there and eliminated Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, uh, and like three other guys in that process. Right. It was more he went through the guys that he should have went through. Um, so yeah, no, I, I like the way and like I said, I feel like him eliminating those guys made that better. Than them having a four minute rumble stay where they get eliminated by the Miz or, yeah, you know, Chad Gables of the world. It made all of those guys that he eliminated feel more important. Yeah. Uh, the other one I had too as a backup. Um, where's that? Well, I mean, Rumble 92, obviously. This is the greatest moment of my life. Big Flair winning the Rumble, of course. That that, that whole Rumble. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Tim. Thank you. <laughs> Just the the whole thing, dude. The whole match. He came in third, I believe, right in that match. Yes. Um, and uh, just the the, the the journey through the whole thing, the the, the backstage interview after this. I mean, you know, you have I feel to like the interview. I feel like the interview is probably 
one of the better parts of the entire thing because oh, um yeah let's not question. let's not forget that Hulk Hogan's a scumbag and yes and vicious like, let's not and, let's not forget about that and I still wonder why why if, if there was a time to turn Hogan heel it was right there God anyway. yeah but it's he him turning heel is the same problem with Cena turning heel you're never doing it because of the merchandise that they were selling right? yeah like it's just it is what it is like you were you're never you were never turning Cena heel no matter how much all of us wanted it to happen because we thought it'd be the greatest thing of all time. Because kids get their parents to buy stuff. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right. It is what it is. No, yeah, um, you're right. For the record, my honorable mention that Jim has the potential uh, audio for. Um, the, the audio is one from one Vincent Kennedy McMahon. To the horrible, human horrible human being. Or the it other was, one. It, it, was, it was Benoit. Oh. I'm certainly glad I hit that button and not the other Vince McMahon sound. I, I mean, I, that's why I kind of gave you the look like. Well, I wasn't even looking way. at you, so I was just like. Oh, okay. I was giving you more the look like, yeah, it's definitely the, the horrible human yeah. being version and not the other. Not the other one? Yeah, because at the end of the day, um, Chris Benoit, horrible human being. Um, Ooh, yeah. Just no. I don't want to lift that chair up so you can people yeah, can actually see you. Horrible human being. Oh. Yeah. Hey, there he is. I just like the, short. You want to give I mean, you uh, short. three r- 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 moments of all time? Uh, personal favorite moments, uh, Joe? I mean, how many have you guys done? We, we've done three. our three. We've done our three ready. So I have no way of knowing. if. Okay, so mine were um, Edge Return, mm-hmm. um, the first Women's Royal Rumble. Okay. And what the fuck did I have as my third one? Cactus Jack versus uh, right, Triple H, right. the match at Rumble. Oh, okay. Gyms were uh, Undertaker uh, levitating out of the screen at ninety four. Oh my god! Yes, that, that haunted me as a child, dude. How <laughs> terrifying was that shit? I was, I was. What did I say? I was seven. You seven, eight years old. Uh, eight years nine. Old. Eight eight years old. Nine. I would have been nine that summer. Um, my second one was uh, double quads, McMahon. Yeah. Um, and uh, my third one was the Brock Show in 2020. Okay. How does he have better nicknames in the last four hours than he has his entire life? Yeah, and good old Bedpan McMahon and Double Quads <laughs> McMahon. I think mine was uh, Stone Cold Shenanigans '97, uh, Hogan Warrior '1990 Standoff, and then I, I had Brock, but he stole it, of course. Yeah, I, I was before EJ for the third one, so yeah. I stole the yeah. Brock party. Okay. Ernest's was last it? one was uh what again? What was it again? Um I had it a while ago. What the fuck? Um uh, Rumble 92. Rumble 92. Rumble 92. Going the distance. Oh, yeah, yeah. And oh, then, yeah. And then and then while you're walking over, I honorable mentioned horrible human being Chris Benoit. Oh yeah. That's, that's your three, Joe. It's 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 a great rumble match. It's a great yeah, rumble like match. That's, like that's one of the big like is it 94, uh, 04? Besides 04? the obvious tragedy. Um yeah. like it like that's one of like the the unfortunate um like side sides of the the tragedy too is there's so many great moments uh from his career that well, like actually had against angle i think I like the next say, year that, yeah. 2003 those three yeah okay. the match with angle and that one would like if kurt we, kurt if has we gone on a, record and said that it's like arguably his greatest match I was ever gonna say, if yeah. we were doing a list strictly of matches and i kind of want to avoid matches and just do more moments because that seems uh, uh, yeah, more, it's moments, yeah. the beaten path and kind of mm-hmm. fun but if we were doing matches if we were doing a top three matches angle and benoit would make my top three because that match is a five star, <laughs> fantastic, excellent, excellent match. Like that match is incredible in every capacity, other than the fact that one half of the people in it was a very shitty human being in the end of their life, you know? Um, so, for the sake of fun, the first thing that came to my mind when you were talking about moments for Royal Rumble. Y'all remember when Bushwhacker Luke came on out there and he just <laughs> kind of did his yes. Bushwhacker walk into the ring and got eliminated right away? Like, and did oh, his ninety, I think it was, yeah. Walk back, and just walk Bushwhacker back out. Bushwhacker walk backstage. Yeah, walked in, dumped out, and just. And that was amazing to me. That was literally ever. one of my favorite Absolutely. things as a kid. It's so good. Yeah, no, that was great. Um, 
let's see what else what else would i call greatest moments in royal rumble history um i was a big fan of when the hurricane was gonna double choke slam steve austin and triple h <laughs> that was yep. a fun one that was a fun one our truth coming out and grabbing the ladder and setting it up in the middle of the ring to go get the briefcase that was a great one that that's I mean, these are some like solid comedy moments in my yeah. mind. We don't deserve our truth. Like, let's just <laughs> let's all just like the world doesn't deserve the greatness that is our truth. Yeah, no, I feel like he's underrated in so many ways. Absolutely. So many. He is, he's even a great wrestler. If we're being honest, if you've seen his like TNA oh, ab- work absolutely. and stuff like that, absolutely a great wrestler. Yeah, no, he uh, underrated talent there. So, um, I guess I technically named three already um but yeah no I, to me surprising entries into the royal rumble are always fun seeing spots like that like the hurricane spot with like austin and triple h that was fun like anything where you get kind of something fun um i thought you were gonna talk about Sha- uh sean michaels having to get a backyotomy after the fucking spot that <laughs> almost ended his life you know it's like i am gonna bring up sean michaels though because i know because you, arguably... you got to stare at his ass for the fucking like 30 seconds <laughs> well, in a Royal Rumble match or something? No, 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 because no. I know it's arguably under, I, I know it's arguably overrated because it's one of the shorter Royal Rumbles in history. But the first time when he went from first to last, 90, when 95. it was just the Shawn Michaels show, when him and where he, he did the skin the cat thing and he didn't get eliminated and he, you know, Davey Boy almost won. I was a kid. I, Shawn Michaels was my favorite. Slur. that was like the greatest royal rumble match of all time for me at that point in my life th- that was the most amazing thing i loved every second of it i could not get enough of it you know um and honestly if we're talking just from a personal standpoint favorite royal rumble memories hard for me to actually overall go with a different memory as my absolute favorite than when Mike and I went to the 2019 Rumble, um, it's not. It wasn't my first Royal Rumble I'd ever been to. I'd been to the one in Philly a few years back where Roman Reigns won and and The Rock came out to try to get him cheers and it just didn't work. I, I was at that one. That was a fun <clears throat> Rumble. I never got to do any of the New York City Rumbles. They always sold out at the Garden before I was ever able to get tickets. So I never. The, the Royal Rumble is one of the few that I never got to see at the Garden, even though it was there quite a few times. But uh, Mike and I, back in 2019, we set out. We did the big four. We did we did the Rumble. We did Mania, as we always do. We did SummerSlam. And we did Survivor Series. And most of the NXT shows connected to each of those weekends. So that Royal Rumble, being there, being in the baseball park, being on this trip, and more than anything else, seeing how excited Mike was to be at a Royal Rumble, like, I... They're my, I, they're my favorite. I don't know that I've ever seen him more excited, and I've been to like countless shows with this man. A, a this million, point. yeah. Like I mean, like on we've been to like eleven WrestleManias alone, let alone all the other Ring of Honor. I say, can and, we can we not talk about the thirty seven shows in one weekend that we saw when we right. were in like Atlanta and New York? Can yes. we not talk about yeah, those? Yeah, yeah. No. I, I mean, that's not even counting like Ring of Honor shows we've been to over yeah. the years, NXT shows, like like um, millions of shows. I don't think I've ever seen Mike more excited than for the Royal Rumble matches in 2019. He was like a kid in a candy store. He I was timed just all them. Smile. He timed them. He sat there with his phone out. I stopped watching. Stopped watching it <laughs> to see how long the entries actually were and stuff like that. And now here's, like, a question. He here's a question. Here's a question because I know. Dislike. Um, they don't put the time on the clock until 10 seconds, right? Yes. Correct. Correct. Because okay. it's Titan time. It's Titan time. Yeah. Right. Because because some of them were 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 within like one to three seconds. So you kind of give them the benefit of the doubt because yeah. you don't know when they start the clock. Some of them are. There's off. there's sometimes where there's like two three minutes between. Yeah. yeah. Entry. I, I should yeah. you not. There was a spot in the men's match where it was like we're at like three and a half minutes and we're not even yeah, at ten seconds it's, yet. It's Titan time. If there's a story to tell in the ring, you let that story tell. Correct, hundred percent. But it's just—it was one of those where I wanted to see how bad some of the timing was. Yeah, I mean, obviously, next year, next year in Philly, um, you know, Lord willing, I'm going to be 
knocking WrestleMania off my bucket list, but but a, a Royal Rumble is is definitely uh, uh, definitely. I the, would say I would say next year about. 400 ish days will probably be uh potentially partaking multi-night wrestlemania sitting with within uh the same row hopefully um for sure yeah for sure um you know as, as long as i'm still on this earth uh, a year from now uh we'll certainly uh certainly be there because uh, i'm the, watching that... the uh, 97 rumble right now and i forgot stone cold did the also did the push-ups too after uh living oh, one that's the right. uh, um, I dude. There's... I, I'm currently watching. You know what? Suns Nets. What, what's also worth that, a mention, and it, he's not everyone's favorite guy at the moment. But in 2011, I think it was. It might have been 2010 when CM Punk was out there when he was doing the Straight Edge Society cutting, thing, cutting the promos after. Oh, the promos. Like, yeah, like there was a there was a good stretch of like five or six guys where he was. It was him and the person would come out and he'd eliminate them and then spend the rest of whatever time was left just cutting a promo about how awesome he is. You know what else is my favorite part else. about you know what else is my favorite part about that run? Is Triple H just came in and dunked him out. Yes. Um in that in that rumble. And I'm just <laughs> like, boy, ain't that perfect. Like if that's not if that's not a microcosm of every um wine bitch and complain that CM Punk has about the wrestling business. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. For sure, for sure. And then we have to mention Austin getting taken out by the corporation. Yes. And McMahon winning the Royal Nine, Rumble. 99, yeah. That was the one that's they a, ended up in the men's room. Yes. That's a wacky they ended up in one, the women's room. Yes. Yeah, that was a wacky one, though, man. That's a fun one. No, yeah, that one fun. made perfect sense because you got Austin out of the match for a while because you knew his only target was Vince. It got right. Vince on the commentary booth because <laughs> you didn't have to have him in the ring because Austin was basically dead. I mean, it was perfect for the two of them coming out one and two. It made the most sense because you weren't getting Vince into that match actually wrestling for 45 to 50 minutes. Like you weren't getting that from Vince. No, it was a well-booked one. It was a good Absolutely. storytelling right. WrestleMania, uh, Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you guys remember Royal Rumble 2000 when Kai and Ty was never actually in the match. But they got eliminated seven got times. Got eliminated seven times. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. Our good friend Dick to go kept coming out. Yes. And they were literally like, Dick, you got to go. I also love uh, Santino as the shortest entry. Yeah, Santino, Santino yeah. has the shortest. I wasn't ready. He was short, he short on Bushbacker? Yeah, he literally walked in the ring and came like close yeah, on I mean, it was, and They it did was, that on purpose to be shorter than the Bushbacker. Yeah, it was literally one. I, li- I don't think you can you can get shorter because it was... Holy shit. He stood up and got clotheslined out. Yeah. Short in the world, yeah. world too? Oh, damn. Okay. But... Uh, Yes, Grandpa was shorter, um, but uh, uh, <laughs> any others? Uh, we we probably want to head to Mike's topic because I think um, I think Joe's we will we will certainly be a, a bit long form uh, as it should. All right, so uh, for the second consecutive week, um, yes, I love this game. We've decided to bring. I've decided to bring back um, guess the wrestler via accomplishment um, again. You each get three guesses. Use them wherever you want. Score after week one. Joe has three. Ernest has one. Jim with the big fat zero currently. Um, it's not how I would have thought that would go. I mean, he, he, the only one he got was the layup. Oh, fair. And I mean, JBL, I thought someone would get, but no one knows the wrestling god. Um, all right. Five wrestlers. Uh, first wrestler. Uh, first clue, as I have to pull my phone over here. 2009 Feud of the Year. Mm. No, I got nothing. That could be anybody. Joe. Yes. Randy Orton. Correct. Wait, really? Yeah. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was Randy Orton. What? Yeah. All right, next one. <laughs> Shit. That's <laughs> Joe's. Other clues were I pulled Randy Orton out my ass. You would. All right, other clues for this one. Oh my. Yeah. Uh it was Money in the Bank winner, two time Royal Rumble winner, tenth Grand Slam champion, seventeenth Grand Slam champion. There's because of the way the, the title belts shook out. 10-time WWE champion, one-time U.S. and Intercontinental champion, and then a one-time Raw and SmackDown tag champ. Real talk, though, the worst part about having sex with Randy Orton is he comes out of nowhere. 
I thought it was the voices in your head. No, I like him. No, you don't. But, but does he have one ten, ten world championships? Call me my face. He, yeah, he's a ten time WWE. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, all right. Number two. This man ranked number five in the PWI five hundred in two thousand and fourteen. Okay. Ooh. I got nothing. One time king of the ring. In 2000. Oh, okay. Okay. EJ? Next. Hmm? Is Triple H? Incorrect. Fuck. Okay. One time money in the bank winner. Um. This feels wrong, but Joe. Yes. Who is CM Punk? Incorrect. Okay. You get three shots, two shots. Three. Okay. Winner of a Royal Rumble. EJ. Yes. Is it Chris Jericho? Incorrect. Fuck. Joe. Yes. Brock Lesnar. Incorrect. Shit. That's a good guess, though. That's a good guess. Uh, Daniel Bryan. Incorrect. This man is a three-time United States champion. Three time? Three time. Three time. Three time. No, you said it four times. Three time? Three time. Okay. Ernest can't count. He can't be in on the joke. Anybody want to take a guess here or are we moving on to the next clue? Next one. Four time raw tag team champion. So it was the tag champion, but it was on the raw brand specifically. Correct. In 2014. EJ. Yes, Ernest, your last guess. <sighs> Is it Kofi Kingston? Incorrect. No. Kofi never won King of the Ring. Yeah, That's I was going to say. He also or, never or, won or, Royal or, or Royal Rumble. That's right. He never was a Rumble winner. This is my probably this is the never era. will be. This is the era? No, probably not. This is the era I'm not really as uh, firmed up on. 2014. 14. Yeah. Um. Who? 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 Final. Final clue. Three time WWE champion. Three time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I know who it is now, but I'm not gonna. Yeah. Randy Orton? Again, number five in the PWI 500 in 2014. One time King of the Ring, one time Money in the Bank, one time Royal Rumble winner, a three time WWE United States champion, four time Raw Tag Team champion, and a three time WWE champion. Sheamus. Correct. Ooh. Jim is on the board. See, I knew it wasn't Edge because I'm pretty sure he was retired by 2014. I was literally going to say he's, he's currently sitting over my left shoulder because he's sitting on my oh, little funny. shelf over here. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, our third Too many lines. Our third uh, wrestler, one-time European champion, mm-hmm. Joe. Yes. Who is Triple H? Incorrect. Joe. Yes. Who is Shawn Michaels? Also incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Who's Who's awesome Davey Boy Smith? And you're out. <laughs> Three I'm pretty sure that was all the European <laughs> champions. <laughs> you lose your brain too good there, bud. Uh, I mean, there's one probably time, a lot of one-time Euro champions. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> one-time WWF tag team champion. EJ. Yes. British Bulldog. He I, said I that, man. He did say, 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 say that. Fuck. Sorry about that. That still counts. That's, count, that's, that's, definitely counts. Counts. that's, that's embarrassing, bro. He did say that. Fucking A, dude. Stupid. It should count twice. Because <laughs> yeah. it was that dumb. That's pretty embarrassing, bud. <laughs> I'm watching fucking. It was funny. I watched a Bulldog down in the, the Rumble. That's... Stupid idiot. Thank you. Fourth ever WCW Triple Crown winner. Oh yeah! Oh motherfucker! We, just, we literally all just y'all looked at in this these. One. We just looked at these on the Tuesday <clears throat> show. I EJ. looked at them on yes, the screen. Eddie Guerrero, incorrect. 
Do you think Eddie Guerrero was WCW World Champion? He's an idiot. What? Well, what? That, that, that 2000 era? I don't know what happened beyond 99. I think it was possible that, that era. WCW was closed by 99. Moron. No, it was no, like 2001. It closed. 2001. March 2001. Close enough. But Eddie Guerrero Eddie was in WWE wasn't. by then. Yeah, yeah. Two-time WCW United States Champion. If the last clue on this is killed his entire family, I think that's fucked up. I'm just putting that out there. I can I can tell you it's not Chris Bowflex. Okay. I'll I'll let them know that one. It's Chris, not Chris, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho. You are also now eliminated from the fucking guessing game. Go ahead, so Jim. Jim. It's all down to Jim. He's got a free run. I hate everything so much. <laughs> This wrestler, British Bulldog, <laughs> won best maneuver in 1997. What a maneuver! Best maneuver. What a, what a maneuver! You won an award for best maneuver. Nice one, Joe. <laughs> best maneuver. What the? Well, fuck? it's like it's like my opinion about how Imagine Dragons is the best band name of all time because no matter where you add different versions of punctuation into their name, you totally change their name. Imagine. Like if you add a comma in the middle, dragons. they're imagined dragons. If you add uh oh, what exclamation point, what are you doing, Joe? I can't even mute him. Because he's at my I can't hear you, Jim. I have fucking imagine dragons in my. No, I can't mute internet. him because he's at your house. I know. I can't either. Like I could mute EJ. I can mute you both, but I can't mute one of you. You, if you, you, add, you you didn't even see me mute the microphone. You, you, and you, I'm watching like what the fuck. If you, if you, you give me the, the next clue. at the end, there imagine get dragons. Get a, get a, get a clue. Okay, final final clue. As I'm trying to, oh, uh, there's two left. Four time WCW tag team champion and three time, excuse me, three time WCW world champion. Ooh. The first, oh. the seven clues again, so Jim can look at them. One time European champion, one time WWF tag team champion, the fourth WCW Triple Crown winner. EDP. Correct. Diamond Dallas Page. If you I put just, a question mark like in the middle, they're, oh, Jesus they're Imagine Dragons. Oh, shut up, Joe. It is, it is for goddamn ridiculous how Joe and intern Mark are the same person. They're the same. Could you imagine if we got the two of them on a show together? I don't want to. I think y'all have avoided that specifically. I think we have to. I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced voice. that you or Mark is not just each other in a mask. <laughs> yeah. Are we sure that you don't live at the Hockenstein Estates? Yeah. It was me, Austin. It was me all <laughs> along. <laughs> all right. Number four. All right. Two-time WWE Hall of Famer. Ooh. Joe. Yes. Who's Ric Flair? Incorrect. Jim. Yes. Bret Hart. Yes, correct. Well, okay, your first clue should have been like Kelly Kelly is a better technical wrestler. That, than I mean, is. that that She's alone not a better dancer. We know I mean, that, that, for sure. that alone that alone shrinks Cut the list to, to a Bret Hart to Hogan to, you know. I mean, yes, but here here are his other accomplishments that I went with. Royal Rumble winner. You would have guessed the British Bulldog even though he never fucking won one. No, two t- two time Intercontinental Champion. You would have guessed IRS because you know money. No, me? <laughs> one time WWE United States Champion. You would have probably guessed Kofi Kingston because nobody remembers that he won. You the probably US don't title even remember that he was a WWE US Champion because it happened. Exactly, I would have fucked all y'all up. My, up my, that one on Raw and then he vacated. Yeah, I'd have fucked all y'all up with that one if I if I went with it. So I would have gotten all, that one. Can we all he agree that he, he that, put like, the Miz in the Sharpshooter and he beat the Miz on Raw? Mark Merrill. Yep. Can we all agree that Bret Hart is the nickelback of pro wrestling? Can we all just be on the same page of that? No. In no. what regards? Stop. In what no, regards, Joe, though? Joe, sucks. you disrespectful, See? stupid idiot. You disrespectful, even, stupid idiot. Shut even your me, the, the guy who gives Jim all the shit about Bret Hart, would never stoop to calling him the nickelback of fucking... I mean... Shut the f- <laughs> like he was like super popular for five minutes and now nobody really understands why that's nickelback what except that? for except for people actually still like nickelback yeah, but we don't know why right, fuck you, there's buddy. a lot of things we don't know why but i mean wait, Jim, i'm wait, still Jim, saying wait, that wait, Jim, wait, wait, Jim, wait, 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 w
I, I don't hate them. I don't like them. I couldn't tell you the last That's time I sure listened to a Nickelback song. I'm indifferent. Super. I'm also in a weird spot because uh, there is a guy who was a vendor at the, the my my old job that like knows those guys personally and has like played me recordings of like they're actually really good musicians. But you don't make money as a really good musician anymore. No. And also, I saw so they, they just ago. know how to beat the system, and they beat the system and are fucking gabillionaires because of it. All right, next one, Mike. All right, number five. One time Dusty Rhodes classic winner. Ooh. Okay. That could be a lot of people. One time WWE United States champion. Okay. Joe. Yes. Who is Samoa Joe? Incorrect. Okay. Two time WWE Intercontinental champion. Joe. Yes. Who's Finn Balor? Correct. Okay. Damn. So Samoa Joe's partner in that Dusty Rhodes classic. The other, the other <laughs> clues were... What? I was going to say Shinsuke for a second. What, Ernest? I was going to say Shinsuke no, for a second. But, Shinsuke. I, but I guess they're already, they're already won. The other, the other clues that I had was six-time IWGP junior tag champ, three-time junior heavyweight champion, two-time NXT champion, one-time universal champion. So I feel like after I started with the Dusty Rhodes Classic... If I would have went right to the Universal, um, it would have been a slam dunk. So Yeah. Although if you had gone to the IWGP, Ernest would have had no idea. He'd have been like, what's that? If I would have started with that. What the hell is even that? Yeah. If I would have started with those, I could have gotten that to about four rounds. It's not a a title that Paul Orndorff ever won, so he doesn't really know. He wasn't involved in the feud of the year. That's obvious. Get get it right, motherfucker. Real shame. Um, all right, so let's guess the wrestlers via accomplishment. Jim gets on the board. He picks up three big wins. Uh, Joe gets two more to still hold the lead, and Ernest is bringing up the rear. Shocker, because he likes talking go. about rear. Just the dumb ones. <laughs> where do you wait? Where do you fall on the shocker? He's. Is it is it part of your repertoire? Either we're frozen or he's fucking frozen. No, he's moving. No, he, he's a no, shocker. I think we're frozen. Don't act you like you don't know. One, two, three. I don't. No, I don't know. I don't do that shit. Hey, ooh. good Christ! That's, good that's, that's, that's too white for me. Sorry, I yeah, apologize. Yeah, I think we're good. Oh, it's it is not white. It's not white. Okay. <laughs> no, it, it's not. It's, it's not just brown a white. and pink. It's oh look, white. I'm at, I'm at Johnson. It's brown and pink. Jesus Christ. See, personally, I don't use the shocker because you can't really do that to guys. Then you're just poking them in the balls. <laughs> so. Well, okay. I'm, you know what? I'm going to. So I hate you. I'm going to be really sorry that I asked this. <clears throat> Is there a gay equivalent to the shocker? Oh, no. No, no not you... really, because it's all just one hole. Like there's a like you'd have to use both hands to, you know what I mean? Like because you can sure yeah you can you know got yeah you can you can, you can you. double fist but like oh, boy. <laughs> what's a poor choice of words <laughs> that was a real like, bad choice oh, but like no 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 like you can oh, like boy. yeah no there, there's a there there there's a shocker for men it's called turning them into a fucking ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've never understood that. I don't understand people who are like, "Yo, go elbow deep," and I'm like, "No." Oh, by the way, no, J- Joe, I found him. He's here. Savio Vega. He's here. Savio Vega. Savio Vega? Vega. He's here. Oh, he's there. He's there. I love that for him. So, is it wrong that I want to go on YouTube and I'm going to mention the Three CT show again because I actually watched the show live? Um, the corporation, the the DX. <laughs> the DX going after the nation. Wait, like am I frozen? They... Am I frozen again? No. DX in imitating the, the nation, nation of domination. Yeah. The croc. Road dog with the he's cooking. I don't know. Jim's giving me a look. Who did the uh who I did the I'm Brown? hearing music from somewhere. 
not me. Are you I'm, sure it's I'm, not? I'm, I'm, I'm turned down. I'm turned down. I'm, I'm turned way down. Yeah, because I, I have the TV actually muted, and I actually muted the computer. I'm turned way down. So. It's not me. No, but uh, Road Dog, just his lines where like someone mentions he's cooking. Him. Shit, speaking of Road Dog, just came out now. In the Rumble. He's, like, he's cooking. Speaking of Road Dog, like just, just I'm gonna find that after this show's off the air, just so I can fucking laugh until I almost fucking cry. Road just dog. Road Dog jumping up in the corner doing the D'Lo Brown fucking yeah, head that, bobble. He's cooking. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Homeboy was cooking. Yeah, I have no idea why my 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 echo down here started playing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, nice. child of mine. It's, it's the Russians. Son his ass. Probably. We are coming to see you, my friend. Do you have the nuclear launch codes? <laughs> uh, nope, nope, sure don't. That's a good juju. Guess... Well, we so so we briefly uh hit on some of the 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 subject um yeah figure we would uh be able to go a little bit more deep dive uh once you got here sure um i guess before we uh we go into you know where where we stand and how we feel and things like that um i'm gonna read the the update from um earlier tonight from a family friend. Um, I read this to Jim and Ernest before we went live. Um, pretty, uh, pretty long road ahead. So uh, this is what was said on a, uh, I guess a Facebook live prayer group uh, of some sort from a friend uh, quote. Currently the girls are stable, but they both have a very long road of recovery ahead of them. Gracie, who was 12 uh, when she was originally uh, got to, Nanocoke Hospital. She couldn't feel anything from the waist down. She was diagnosed with an L2 dislocation as well as an L3 and L4 fracture in her back with compression on her spinal cord. Uh, after they got her stable, they transferred her to another hospital uh, where she got feeling back in her thighs, uh, but nothing lower than her knees. Uh, she was taken right for an MRI and into surgery Wednesday morning around 3 a.m. The doctors were able to relieve the compression on the spinal cord. Surgery went well as expected. Uh, when you have trauma to your spinal cord, it's more of a waiting game. With the swelling and the trauma, you have to wait. She still has feeling in her thighs, but no movement as of yet. Um, Grace has tingling in her feet on and off today. Her progress will be a day-to-day -day basis for months to come. She's bruised up pretty badly, but at the time... No injury, no other injuries have been diagnosed. Uh, Jaylee, the other daughter, was diagnosed with an open tibia and fibia fracture uh, where she underwent surgery. They placed an external fixator on and sent her back to the hospital. Um, she was then diagnosed with a C7 fracture in her neck and has been placed in a neck place. Um, I'm going to guess brace. it's the, yeah, I'm going to guess yeah. it's a brace or a halo of some sort. Um, which she'll be in for the next six weeks. She also has an L3 and L4 fracture in her back, uh, which can be managed with a back brace for about 12 weeks. She has a right clavicle fracture from the seatbelt, as well as a broken rib on her right side. She has small left pneumothorax, which is air between the lung and chest wall, but not inside the lung. Um, they are monitoring that as it's not large enough to intervene at this point. Uh, which is a blessing. Today she was diagnosed with perforated valve with three fluid in her abdomen, which um, to us at home who don't know what that means, uh, it's basically internal bleeding in the stomach area. They knew about that and they were watching it. And today they were able to pinpoint exactly where um, that was coming from. That surgery went awesome. They got her in, got the bleeding under control, got her on the mend. She also went to the OR for that today. They did a valve resection which means they took a little out of it, nothing long-term uh, with the effects of that. While she was down there, the orthopedics decided to go with another washout of her leg and some manipulation to the bones for a better alignment. Uh, she still has the external fixator in place, and they placed an NG tube in her nose to decompress her stomach. They'll take that out tomorrow, uh, and this will allow her to resume uh, eating. Um, so... The, the fractures to the leg, um, the, uh, that's basically an open wound. Um, basically, it broke the skin um, from what 
WebMD kind of told me. Mm. Um, so obviously, um, we opened the show with a 10 bell salute. Um, we talked a little bit about things. Um, you know, I shared some stuff about my first ring of honor show where Jay yelled at me for wearing an American wolf shirt because they were wrestling them the next night. <laughs> um, and then shook my hand and we, we, we laughed about it. Um, you know, Jay Briscoe, the professional wrestler. Um, yeah. Joe, I'll, uh, you're the only one that hasn't said anything yet. So I'll let you go first and then, uh, we'll pick the conversation back up. Okay. Um, I guess I obviously wasn't expecting to be here tonight talking about Jay Briscoe in the way that we are. It's, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, it, and, and I'm, I'm going to get on to Jay very quickly. Um, as a fan, I'm going to get over to him. We, when you hear someone passing away at such a young age, for a lot of us, it's kind of our age, you know, it's our age group. I'm 39. Uh, Mike is what? 35 now. I'll be, thir- I'll be 35 in October. I'll be 35 in October. Um, Ernest is like 60. Jim is what? 33. I'll be, I'll be 38 in uh, 38. So yeah. So I mean, July, yeah. Basically old. Well, I mean, like, honestly, look, and I don't want to get too off path on this, but, like, I'm about to be 40. Like, I turned 40 in August this year, and it's hard not to be turning that age and have some looks at life where you're like, damn, if things go really well, I've still lived half my life already. You know, if I make it to 80 – that still only gives me 40 more years. I can't imagine not making it to 40, you know, and, and not even having half the time that I still think that I have or hope that I have, you know, um, like nothing to f- forget about just all the people that he really leaves behind and just like not forget about them. But I'm saying like, besides that, you know, besides all the people that, will forever miss the person that's gone and, and forever have them in their memories. But just it reminds you of how fragile life is and how quick it can just kind of be gone, you know, kind of, kind, kind of like Ernest, kind of like Ernest. Yeah. Um, it, and there's nothing we can do, you know, there's, there's no, you can take as many precautions as you want to take. You can eat healthy. You can, exercise you can do all the things that under normal circumstances those are the things that are going to get you more and more life and then you can get into a car accident you know or you know one of my big fears is flying and i think part of the reason is this you know like it's something i have no control over and it, it, it doesn't take a lot for it to go wrong you know um that's one of those things where it's like People say like, oh, you can't be afraid to live your life. And it's true because if you are afraid to leave to live your life, then you're just never going to leave the house. And that still doesn't keep you safe because most people just die in their homes. Like home accidents are more common than anything else, you know. So we just have the time that we have, you know, we have every day that we have. It, It could be the last day that we have and there's no telling and there's no knowing the one thing that I can say is when you see someone pass away like Jay Briscoe has and you see the out love, the out, the outpouring of love and support for who he was. And I'm sure you guys have been following this as much as I have on podcasts and just Twitter and all that. I haven't seen a single wrestler have negative thing to say about this person. Not a single negative thing. In fact, I've seen nothing but this man was full of life and full of joy and such a pleasure to be around and always in a good mood and always there for 
his kids and his family meant everything to him. His, he was, you know, like the epitome of a family man. And I think that's beautiful, you know? Like, it's it sucks that the situation is he's gone for us to all be talking about how he was this amazing person. Like, people don't get to be told that they're an amazing person often enough while they're still here to hear it. Um, but... I think it does, it, it puts into perspective that, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like we're all going to be gone one day. And if when we're gone, people are talking about us the way they're talking about Jay Briscoe, then we probably did something right. You know, um, there's my favorite band is this band called the wonder years and they have a song called, I just want to sell out my funeral. And that's like the idea of the song basically, you know, like I just, I want to know that when I go out, like people are there and they want to be there because they want to talk about how amazing I was and how awesome I was and how much I touched their lives. And, you know, I think if you live your life every day with that as kind of a goal, you can be an amazing person, you know? And like I said, that's like my biggest takeaway from all of this, besides how sad it is and just you know, hard to explain and all of that. My biggest takeaway is just, but this man was an amazing man. And it seems like he will never be forgotten for that by the people who truly loved him and cared about him and knew him and all of that. And look, I, I never met Jay Briscoe. I, I never, I'm pretty positive on that. I've done a lot of meet and greets at Ring of Honor shows and stuff like that. I don't recall ever meeting the Briscoes. Um, so I have no personal interactions with him that I can talk about. And that's okay. You know, like I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I'm happy to hear that everyone who I have heard from who's had nothing, who's had interactions with him, that have nothing but positive stories to tell, you know? Um, what I could say is, as a fan, I think Jay Briscoe was a lot more integral to my love of pro wrestling as a adult than I think I've actually sat down and realized until basically this week. And again, I think that goes into the whole, like, we kind of take people for granted until they're not here anymore for us to take them for granted, you know? Um, look, I've been a wrestling fan my entire life. I, I can't think of a time when I wasn't a wrestling fan. Like, you know, a lot of people can point to like, oh, this was the first match I watched. This was the first show I watched. Wrestling was always on TV the entire time that I was conscious mm -hmm. of there being a television in my house. So I can't ever pinpoint that from childhood. I can tell you the couple of times when I lost interest in wrestling. I think I've even talked about it on the show here before, you know, probably. I mean, we've been doing this show for like five years now, so it's, it's come up, I'm sure, at some point. Um, two of those times, Jay Briscoe was pretty strongly involved in me becoming a fan again. The, the first time was when I first discovered Ring of Honor in 2002 when they first came out. And, you know, he's been there since show number one. He, he was. He was on the very first Ring of Honor card. I think he was in the very first match, as a him matter of fact. Red. Him versus Red. Yeah. Amazing match. Great. I mean, and not even the tip of the iceberg for what both of those guys became talent-wise, you know? Um, Ring of Honor in, in 2002 and becoming a fan of indie wrestling, which I didn't even know existed prior to Ring of Honor in 2002 – that saved my fandom, you know, that, that made me want to continue to be a wrestling fan and find a love for this hobby of ours as fans again. And Jay Briscoe was a huge part of that. Um, the very first independent wrestling show I ever went to in my life was a ring of honor show in 2004 in, um, in New Jersey. It was at our best. The, not the main event of that show. It was the it was the co-main event. 
But the co-main event of that show was Jay Briscoe versus Samoa Joe in a steel cage for the Ring of Honor world title. And I still vividly remember that match. And I'm someone who doesn't have a great memory for a lot of things, honestly. Hot garbage. If you like, yeah. I vividly remember being there. I remember it it I remember the amount of blood that Jay Briscoe had pouring out of his head during that match. I remember I remember hearing a dude sitting in the audience like about three or four people away from my brother and I. And this dude was all just, like looking at the ring and like Samoa Joe did the thing where he like takes the blood and like wipes it on his face. And this dude was like, ew, he licking the blood. Like that was a thing. Like that's a very distinct memory that I have from this show to the point where if I text my brother to this day, I can literally just text my brother. He licking the blood and my brother starts cracking up and knows exactly what I'm talking about. You know, that was Jay Briscoe's performance. That was Jay Briscoe's sacrifice on that night. That was him putting on a show for us. And you know what? That was in 2004. And I still remember that vividly to this day. I remember that better than I remember half the WrestleMania matches that I've seen live. So that says a lot, you know. Um, the other time where, I'll, where again, Jay Briscoe is very involved in my return to loving wrestling is 2007 because in like 2005 2006 i kind of fell off with ring of honor i kind of was in college finishing school just didn't have as much free time same reason why i wasn't really watching as much wwe like i was kind of watching the big pay-per-views but i wasn't watching a lot of the like weekly shows i definitely wasn't watching raw or anything like that i was too busy with school um and I literally, like, I hadn't watched Ring of Honor. I hadn't gone to any of their shows in, like, two years at that point. And I was I, I was losing interest. WWE was kind of hot, hot trash in 2007 and 2006. And this is a long time. And I, I went to a Ring of Honor show. I went to Manhattan Mayhem. I think it was the first one. It was in 2007. It was at the Hammerstein. It was at the Manhattan Center. It was the upstairs room um and there were two matches on that show that re reaffirmed my love of pro wrestling and i've never looked back i've like i've never had another moment where i was like oh i'm not that into wrestling anymore like i'm not i don't watch the indies as much anymore as i used to i don't i kind of just mostly watch wwe at this point with a little bit of aw sprinkled in but i've never Full on, like, stop watching again the way I did in like 2006, 2007. The two matches on that show that brought me back were Daniel Bryan or Bryan Danielson against Takeshi Morishima mm -hmm. and the Briscoe brothers versus two guys who are pretty damn famous right now in WWE, and that's Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, you know. Kevin Steen and El Generico back then. So one of them is pretty famous in WWE. The other one runs an orphan fair, in Tijuana, fair. Canada. Touche. But he um that was another one where like that those two teams had a feud that whole year, basically, from like that summer through the rest of the year. They probably wrestled each other like five or six times in various matches. Not a lot of gimmick stuff either. Like a lot of just straightforward wrestling matches with a couple of gimmicks towards the end and everything. Every single one of those matches is a five star go out of your way and see it match. Every single one of those matches is tag team wrestling personified. And in a lot of ways, that's what the Briscoe brothers were as an act as a whole. So I think, like, for me, the biggest memories that I'll always have of Jay as a fan are his involvement in bringing back my love for pro wrestling. And like I said, like, if we were sitting here just talking about this topic for some reason, the topic of, like, oh, what got you back into wrestling if you ever fell out of it, and I think we have done that as a topic, I would point out these same things. I don't know that I would stop and think about how Jay Briscoe was an integral part of both of those things. 
And it's a shame that this is the reason why I'm stopping and thinking about that. But I'm going to forever be grateful as a fan for that, you know? And I'm always going to remember his body of work for that reason. You know, I think I think it's incredible because a lot of people like to look at a lot of guys on the indie scene and stuff and say, oh, they're really making their way. They don't need WWE. They don't need AEW. Like, they're making their way on their own, like a Matt Cardona and stuff like that. That's great. That's awesome. The Briscoes may be the only act that have literally never gone outside of the independent scene and probably became as big as you can possibly be, like, at the same level as at least, like, the Young Bucks and people like that. I'd, I'd argue that if you got the right group of people together, we might even be the right group of people, to, sorry about that, to be perfectly honest. If you sat down and argued a top five tag teams of the last 20 years. I'll go one further. Uh, you don't have to go the last 20 years. Uh, they're making my fucking Mount Rushmore. That's no fine. Matter, no matter that's, what. That's so. valid. And But here's the thing, right? Like, they're probably the only ones who haven't been in WWE or AEW to make that list. Or WCW or, like, yeah, some sort of not, big not company. Yeah, non-major. Yeah. Non-major. They never ended up on a major platform. And they still have that level of accolade that I don't think most wrestling fans like true wrestling fans would argue against anyone saying that's one of my top five teams. That's pretty incredible, you know? And I think there's something to be said for that. Like these were, well, uh, Mark is still alive, obviously, you know, uh, but Jay was half of an act that did it in their own terms, did it their own way were incredible in the ring and let their talents talk for themselves, you know, and were successful beyond any doubt while doing that. That's unheard of these days. That is extremely unheard of. So the, they were actually on the first show of our first WrestleMania weekend honor takes center stage. Shoot, yes, they were. Night one, they took on a young up-and-coming tag team of Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. And they beat the absolute yeah. fuck out of them. And the next night... Was it the Kings of Wrestling? No, the next night was the start what? of the All Night Express feud. Oh, uh, okay. Kenny King and Red yeah, Titus. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they ended up having a great feud that year. The rest of that year. Um, when it comes to Jay Lethal or excuse me, Jay Briscoe in ring, um, when you look at faces of companies, I know we talked Roderick Strong being you know Mr. Ring of Honor for a while there. Um, I think Jay Briscoe is Mr. Ring of Honor. Oh, for sure. Um, former champion, you know, Kevin Owens put out a tweet, you know a four page tweet basically referring to one of his greatest moments in ring of honor history was being the one that Jay beat for the title Mm -hmm. being in the ring while the whole Briscoe clan was celebrating, you know, it's the guys that you've seen come out and, and, you know, let's, let's be a hundred percent transparent here. Um, The greatest tag team feud in the last five plus years took place 2022 FTR versus the Briscoes. You know, the, 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 the four of those guys, you know, and Dax has said it and cash has said it, you know, that they felt that the four of them were, were put on this earth to do that dance together. They arguably, arguably put together two of, if not all three of matches that should be in, most people's top tens for matches of the year from last year, that two out of three falls match, obviously the double dog collar match that we talked about at length during the year end awards um, are are matches that those are going to go back and you're going to look at those and you're going to go. Yeah. Those, those were moments. Um, There's a lot of those for him. I didn't want to say like I didn't want to say this earlier, but it it this truly feels like a weird circle. 
Um, his last big match is a double dog collar match. Wasn't Brody's last big match the dog collar match against Cody? I think so. Maybe his last. Like, I think that was. It was Cody. It, it was de- I, like. What? I'm gonna let me. I can look up the his match, uh, Brody Lee's match. Is- yeah, because it because it it's almost like I don't want to say that it's like divine intervention or anything like that. Yeah, his last match was the dog collar match. But two guys that had careers that they did, and at the time that we lost them, were having arguably the best feuds and matches that they've had or have had in quite some time. It's it's just the gut punch all over again. You know, and and we talked about, you know, my first interaction with them at a Manassas show where I got yelled at for wearing an American Wolf shirt. Um, That was my first interaction with them. You know, obviously I'd seen them before, but that was my first interaction. So, you know, it's it's double underhook power pile driver, you know, that 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 ain't any other name from now on than the fucking J driller. Um, That'll always be the J driller. Um, he, but he's done. He's done some things that some people uh, will always be thankful for, myself included. Um, you know, we we talked when we came on about you know chicken farmer doing what he could to you know support his wife and kids and wrestling and doing all that stuff. And you know, when when Ring of Honor went away, what did what did they do? They went to Impact and won the tag titles. Mm-hmm. Went to Game Changer Wrestling, won the tag titles, um, and then Tony Khan brought back Ring of Honor, and we 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 saw that there was some sort of light in the tunnel that had been darkened for Jay and Mark Briscoe. Um, they had the great feud with FTR this year, and then you know Tuesday evening, it it so tragically took a turn for the worse. Um, obviously, um, you know, I don't know what more there is to say because there, there isn't much that we can say it's, it sucks to be having this conversation because it has to be in remembrance. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those where we'll, but we'll, we'll, unfortunately, we'll cross this bridge again at some point about someone. Um, but for it to be a 38 year old man in the really peak of his run is mm-hmm. not something that I think any of us were ready for. And I don't think that there's a way to be ready for these moments. Um, cause they are all gut punches in their own shape and form, you know, look, Rewind well, I, the think, clock, Brody. I think the, the, the big difference here, um, because you know, we because uh, you know, I touched on some things at the start of this this show, but you can listen to 3CT, we we did this, um, on, on our show tonight as well. But the thing I said is 3CT's been on the air, um, for, for almost nine years and um we've we've done like memorial shows um in segments countless times um the the two that are very different from any of the other ones um were mr brody lee and tonight because i mean the ultimate warrior passed suddenly but he was long since retired. Um, he, you know, he was was older. Um, so we didn't expect it, but he's older. He's not actively. We didn't watch him wrestle one of the best matches of his life. Right. A month 20 ago. 20 days ago. Um, 
you know, uh, other guys, um, you know, there was uh, Roddy Piper had been in uh, bad health off and on at times, mm -hmm. you know, so, so the, these, the older guys, the legends, not that you ever are ready to hear of somebody passing that you, that you don't obviously want to hear of anybody passing, but it's different when it's, you know, Brody Lee wrestles a dog collar match with Cody and then you never see him again. And two months later, um, your you, Christmas weekend, you're getting the news that he passed. Yeah, and you know, you're getting ready to do a, a a sports podcast, and all of a sudden, your your one of your your friends starts texting you and giving you this news that, um, if you're hearing it, is probably fairly uh, able to be accurate because of the circles that we run in. Um, so it's, it's just, you you don't expect it. Um, and it, and it's a, it's a, um, and this is, this will be my, my final thought on it is, is it's, it's one of those horrible reminders of, of how, uh, how fragile life is and you don't miss, you know, you don't want to miss the opportunity to experience something, to talk to somebody to tell somebody that you love them to, you know, um, give somebody a hug, you know, so, so something, anything, something that seems so small and minuscule. Um, if you have a dispute with somebody, uh, that you care about, don't, don't not apologize. Cause you think you're going to get the better of the situation because you don't know what's going to happen in the next day, hour, minute. You, you, you just don't. Um, so if that's, if, if, if we can learn a lesson from this, it's, it's, um, love your people, tell them you love them, enjoy them when you can. Um, and, uh, don't, don't, don't miss moments. Yeah, I think that's valid. I think that what's difficult in a way about this is how you know we're fans. You know what I mean? Like it's hard because obviously we're not going through the same thing that people who knew him are going through. You know, we're not going through the same thing that his family is going through. That I mean, they're going through a whole other thing. They're focusing on two daughters trying to make it out of the hospital and live full lives. I, and... I really feel like at this point, I don't necessarily know that any of them have processed. Right. Because the focus is more getting them, getting the girls yeah. healthy. Right. I, I don't think any right. like right. I feel like I feel like they've been hit. Like they know, yeah. But I don't know that any of them have had that. No, they couldn't have to sit to, down and right. be yeah. like it's all sudden. The whole thing. Okay, all life just life just really just kind of changed. flipped, turned upside yeah. down. Like yeah. because, and again, parent of three. Um, you know. I would hope that if something ever happened to me and, and the kids were in the car, Carol's first instinct would be, you know, and no offense to my own body, but if I don't survive her first mindset needs to be, if something's wrong with the kids, make sure that they're okay. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they're going to need you a lot more than my dead carcass is going to need you, you right. know, not, not to sound morbid or anything along those lines, but you know, as a parent, I feel like priority number one, um, is is the girls you know and there's gonna come a time in the next couple days where the girls are gonna be okay and we're gonna have you know this is either you know we're getting feeling back in the legs or we're not and we're gonna have to go through this this challenge you know moving forward but then they're gonna have that opportunity to sit down and they're to, to know that you know that door ain't gonna open no and i think that's i said it when we talked at the beginning of the show this family is going to need its friends and its wrestling friends, but it's going to need us 
for a while. This isn't, we love Jay Briscoe on January 19th slash 20th. And then come January 26th, we don't know. We don't remember Jay Briscoe's name. We don't remember his family. We don't remember any of that stuff. This is one of those where that family is going to need us in January and February and yeah. April and June. And it, it, it's, if there's a time for the wrestling community, you know, to come together and to, to, to really throw your arms over someone mm -hmm. it's that it's that family right now. And to the credit of the community, from what we've seen so far last couple of days, last 48 hours, you're seeing that. You're seeing that so far. So, yeah, for sure. You know, not only the the outpouring of um, tweets, but obviously they started their the GoFundMe account and, you know, the Bucks and Jericho and Cody right. and Adam Cole have all gone above and beyond, you know, with their donations, um, you know, but their donations equal a small part of it, you know, fans, $5, $10, $50, $100, mm -hmm. you know, so buying a T buying a t-shirt off of pro wrestling tees, you know, right. that, that, that like there are ways that, you know, we can support all of them mm -hmm. um, because, you know, Ashley lost her husband. The three kids lost their father. Mark lost his brother and someone who he's been with for the last 20 plus years of his life in the wrestling business and the last 36 years of his, of his actual life, you know, not a lot of people have sat back and, you know, how's, how's someone like Mark going to compartmentalize the fact that his safety net is no longer there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what, you know, I get it. Mark's Mark's married, but Jay always seemed like kind of a safety net for Mark whenever they were, uh, they were at wrestling shows. Um, <laughs> You know, but this family experienced the tragedy that nobody would ever hope, even on their worst enemy. Um, wow. yeah. So, this is one of those where the wrestling community, you know, something that we're a part of. You know, we do a show. Jim's part of two shows. You know, me and Joe do a second show where we we talk about old school ECW. Uh, or WWE, CW. Like, even, you know, even just being a fan, you're part of that community. So it's it's all one of those things where the whole the whole community it, it's we're all at a loss, and I don't necessarily know that there's ever going to be the right words to to say. It's 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 frustrating, I guess. It's that like. There's a lot of anger. I feel because it, it's 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 the why portion, and and, and here's the thing: I, I'll trade never seeing Jay Briscoe wrestle again so that his kids have their dad. At this point, like that's just where I keep coming back to. It's yeah. it's you know maybe it's the dad, maybe it's the dad in me. It's just it's it's to me at this point. If the most that we can, not the most, but if, if what we can take out of this is remembering, as fans, remembering everything that Jay did in the ring, because his career was incredible. Was. It just was. It's a, it's a top five tag team career at the very least. Top five indie wrestling career. Top, there's a, it, it. It deserves a lot of accolades, and that's. It would have deserved all that, even if he was still here with us, you know. But remembering all of that keeps him alive in a way, uh, for the fans at least, you know. For I mean, he was proud of his body of work, obviously. Um, but I think there's an aspect of it where, like I said earlier, like looking at the outpouring of love that he's gotten from family and friends and people who met him and had interactions with him and stuff. I feel almost in a way where it's like, if we can all take out of that, maybe becoming slightly better people based on his example. 
you know, I don't know if there's any better way to honor somebody, you know, like that's, we've all lost people. We've all lost friends. We've all lost family. We've all lost loved ones. We've all lost people we're fans of. We've all lost loss, you know, like a lot of life is loss, unfortunately. And like most things, I think you have to find lessons in, in, in those losses, you know? And that's the hardest, that's almost the hardest thing to accept because it kind of sucks that like the best you can get out of something is a lesson uh, when, when you really just want the person. But if we can live our lives just a little bit better because of this person and the example that they set, I think we're doing something right, you know? So I think if that's, if that's one of the major takeaways for a lot of people, you know, if, if it becomes, you start thinking to yourself, what would Jay Briscoe do in this situation? And I don't mean that in a, he kicks some ass kind of way, like in a not, wrestling not in, not in character, but no, like Jay Briscoe, right. the, the individual, the human like, I don't know if y'all have seen that video floating around with him and his daughter where they're, like, mm. doing a little dance recital. Thing. I mean... Practicing or cheer. Right. Like, that's... If that's not the dad you are, then you're not being a good dad. You know what I mean? Like, that's... There's no other... There's almost no other way for me to put that. It's like, if, if you're not that selfless and caring for somebody else in the world, then you need to probably reevaluate your life. You know, Jim, I think Jim hit it on the head. You know, this yeah. is this is the this is the smack in the face to where if you have someone that you haven't talked to or you have some beef that you that 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 that's unnecessary, you know, pick up the phone, clear the air. Don't don't let this don't let this be the last that you talk to someone, you know. And if and if you're on good terms with somebody but you haven't talked to them in a while, pick up the phone. Because you, you're not guaranteed to be able to pick up the phone tomorrow. And, and I think that's the, the message that I think that I take away from this. And, you know, to Joe compounding it with, to, you know, almost live life like Jay Briscoe would, you know, it, it's, it's one of those where there's lessons, but it's not a lesson that you want. For sure. Yeah. It, you know, Joe, Joe touched on, you know, like the, the best way to kind of, uh, uh, fit a tribute and, and not to to try and um rush rush the end of this or, or or wrap this up i don't i don't know that there's a great way to to wrap it up and transition um but but i'm gonna kind of propose something i know like the way that we do um wrestler of the week on 3ct is is each of us nominate um our our top five and then the as a collective the, we get the the top five with the points and all that. Um, each of us this week, um, we didn't, it was unspoken. We didn't say, we didn't uh, all declare it. We just all submitted ours and we all had Jay Briscoe as our number one. And Tim had his um, uh, uh, people's champ pick and he also selected Jay Briscoe. Um, you know, this, this is, this is merely a, a suggestion and, and we can, you, we can veto it and and do it the way we always do it, um, but I propose Jay Briscoe is the is the sole wrestler of the week this week. I, I don't know, Mike, what that does to your to your math. So you yeah, can, doesn't doesn't affect my math in the slightest. Um, because we're gonna power rank him at the end of the month anyway. So if Jay's the only person we nominate, then this is just uh, this is just one week where we have one wrestler. You yeah. don't, we don't that, have to that, do you know, eight nominees this week. I feel like I'm this good is, Joe's, Joe gave us a thumbs up. He's good with it. So, uh, you know, Jay's uh, Jay's it this week. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot, you know, and here's the thing. Anybody who had a good week this week, if you want to nominate them, feel free to carry them over to next week. Um, I feel like that's the best way to do this. I mean, I know, sure. and, you know, Mickey James winning the, the, the Impact Women's title and, Josh Alexander retaining his and Darby Allen and all of those matches that they had this week. Save that for next week because this week is more important than a statistic on a small piece of paper in a small blip of a world known as professional wrestling. Um, 
I think this is the easiest decision that we as a show will make in 2023. Um, yeah. So without a shadow of a doubt, unanimous across the board, Jay Briscoe, the uh, take three wrestling uh, only nominee for wrestler of the, of the week slash year. Um, so he automatically gets added to the list. He'll be the only one that goes on for this week. Um, wouldn't be surprised if I see him near the top of all of our lists at the end of the month. Um, just being a hundred percent honest or alert. Um, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I think, like I said, there aren't many slam dunks that we get as a show. Either you, one. either Ernest has something going on. Joe's got something going on me or Jen. Like there aren't many that we just put the biscuit in the basket and make this one, the easiest one that we do all night. Like this is the easiest thing that, that I think we can go with. So, uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's wrestler of the week. Um, that's the show, guys. Um, I don't necessarily know, like Jim said, there's no real way, easy way to to, to, to move on. There's no easy way to to wrap things up. Um, it sucks. The wrestling world and an amazing family, from what it sounds like, lost a true pillar of it. Um, you know, so. We'll 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 help the best that we can as a community to hold that pillar and that family in our prayers and our thoughts and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I got nothing, guys. Love you all. Stay safe. We'll see you next week.